Certitude. Certitude is not our friend. <laughs> what a strange thing to say. Certitude is not our friend. Today, yesterday, the day before, <laughs> all the days, I spend time thinking, just thinking. I mean, about molds. Look, here's the thing. See these two presses back here behind the bandsaw? They're not high fidelity machinery. Come look. Okay, you're talking to a guy who's made a lot of boards. And I'm not impressed with myself either. Look at this thing. I didn't care that it crushed. <laughs> That's not good. This one's still super solid. So whatever factory this was made in, this one was, was crappier than that one. And I'll fix it. I'll get some C-bar. I'm actually gonna get some C-stock and drop it on here and, uh, <laughs> and, and just level the, level the pressure on the top with some, some C-bar. Makes great boards. Has been crushed like that for a long time. Is not good. Has done good. These presses, the way they're set up, can be moved apart so that I can make boards out. As far as I know, the force triangulation works on these out to about 50 inch long boards over a proper made mold, proper reinforced with simple wood armature, simple wire mesh inside to hold the concrete together, glued to wood, screwed to wood, multiple layers of wood, not even, not even tall ways. The flat way, two by four, everything's working, moi, okay? The stiffness of the concrete mold plus the uh, ability of the wood to stitch it together makes it so I can move those apart and get nice long boards. Oh, 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 also, like the great scandal, okay? Uh, this is not loose. I've got boards in the press right now, but these rock back and forth, so when I, when I, drop the drop the mold down um i keep a rubber mallet around just to make sure i align them and i eyeball align them on those rustic molds but i found that the more i pressed and the more frequently i pressed the less i had to worry about alignment because the wood pack itself the compression of the wood pack was actually centering the centering the mold. The mold was bottom centering and canoeing down. Also, when you crank my molds like this on each one, the mold goes down. Now, a lot of you, I've turned a lot of you on and a lot of you knew it before. I didn't know you could do this. If my friend Britt hadn't pitched this idea to me back in the research era, and when he pitched this idea, he said, why don't you, why don't you instead of building a press that's two immovables like this, and then you can't do anything longer than your press because that was a problem earlier because all the industry's presses were 32 inch presses and I wanted to make 35 inch boards and they couldn't do it. And they also, boy, they gave me a lot of flack for wanting longer boards. They, it was back when long boards were like verboten, right? So I, I, he says, why don't you turn it sideways? And then it was like, it would canoe down like that. And uh, it was like, no, that'll never work. Pressure, sensors, gauges, this, that, laser lights, CNC, all this stuff. But I just did it. I just did it. I built one. And I built it with a 30 ton and a 30 ton and a 20, uh, like a 25 ton jack set, screw jack mayhem, right? And no, I didn't. I did a five ton. I did two five ton jacks on two 30 ton stands. I, I don't have that press anymore. Um, I actually abandoned it in a warehouse because I was injured and uh, had surgery and couldn't move it out and didn't have the helpers. So um, it's abandoned in a warehouse. Uh, and so here I am, right? And um, hang on, I've got a lot of messages coming up and I'm going to mute the messages. Um, 
Oh, well, I didn't mute the messages, but, um, so, but the, designing the press was hairy and filled with people who were absolutely certain that I wouldn't be able to make it work. And I was pretty certain I wouldn't either, except it did work. It worked really well. In fact, there are things about canoeing a mold down versus just pushing it down straight that I'm beginning, I've begun and more than begun to suspect that that yeah, increases the degree of bonding between the, uh, between the different, there we go, I muted it. All right. So then we've been through a, a thing where we have a good grip of folks who are excited about the mathematical computerized CNC approach, and that's not the maker's movements approach. We're, um, we're well, I'm all about the lo-fi uh, ability to get into production and get into quality production without uh, a lot of, now there's a robust energy of argument that comes immediately upon the tail of what I'm about to say, but the cost of CNC, the learning curve, if you're already a CAD master and you've already got software, um, super. Um, but if you're starting your operation and you want to run a brand like Johnny Manac or someone like that, and you have a, you're relying on friends and discounts to get your molds made, that's fine. Um, I don't know that uh, that actually describes Johnny Manac, but that describes a lot of the people I know who have implemented CNC cut molds into their operation and good on you. Um, and at Life Skateboards, we have a mix of CNC and non-CNC, but we've been having this conversation about mold making and I love it because what that tells me is that we as the makers movement are not satisfied with um, just any mold. We want our own molds. We want our product to be ours. And that is to me a major success. I have no stones to throw at the person who mirrors a an uncut blank with the caveat that a lot of uncut blanks are slightly warped and a lot of uncut blanks warp slightly when submerged in concrete. Um, but I know the boys, the Canucks, the, I, that your little crew, I call you guys the Canucks, Jamie. Um, the Canucks have got the thing handled really well. They mirror molded, got to work, and are pressing out solid boards. That's a double thumbs up. Um, but when the, bu when the bug bites you and you say, I want to make my molds my own, um, there's kind of like, a, there's a digression here, um, uh, a, a divergence, where if you are wanting to get into CNC and learn how to make CNC, our Jared has made a great place, skateboard geometry group, where you can go. Um, and... That's a school of thought. This is another school of thought, and we've enjoyed looking at this. And But the thing about the, the mold mystery today, I'm just having my certitudes, you know, because I have my experience, and my experience is insane. It really is. Um, I, I've got cuts here with, I mean, just the glue lines on these cuts. I know I need to replace my bandsaw blade. I always go to the, like, nth degree. That's gorgeous. That's the, that's a nose cut. Um, tail cut. That's a tail cut. And then here's along the line. Um, here's along the line and up to the nose. I mean, it's insane. I'm not, it's just, and I was cutting it yesterday and I was thinking about molds and I was thinking about how, yeah, but if you don't have offsets and like that sort of thing and, you know, um, and I was puzzling because I'm like, you know, I've got people who, nobody's mean to me. You guys are all super cool, super cool. Every one of you has been nothing but civil and cool. I have a huge respect for the civility of this group. But like, for t over 10 years, I've been getting cuts like this off of my, off of my, my mold. My molds are good. I'm proud and happy with my molds in as much as I made them by hand like a surfboard shaper in, um, I made them in plaster. I have a plaster master underneath here that I can kick into anytime I want. But I kept asking, I'm like, I get all these like correspondences, not a few, where someone says like, 
if you're using offset, if you're not using offsets in your molds, then you're going to have gapping and your boards, you know, cut one open, you're going to see what a mess they are inside and how much glue pocketing you have. And they're going to be heavy and they're going to be weak and they're going to have bubbles and a lot of this, nobody being uncivil, but just guaranteeing me that if I don't have CNC mathematically calculated offsets for the thickness of the wood and the, all this stuff, that I'm going to have real problems with my molds. And I can't hear that with 10 years of experience without wondering, um, what's the difference? Why, what's the deal? Um, why am I getting such good results? Um, I could, I could just cop to the blessing of the almighty and be happy. Um, but I, I, I suspect it's, it's less metaphysical than physical. I trust you guys that People without offsets are having real problems with their molds. And I do trust you that you're right when you tell me that without offsets, I'm doomed to problems. I just know that I'm not having any of those problems. And yesterday I touched on it and I thought, you know, maybe I'm a weird guy because my molds are not, they don't have sharp folds in them that I've, I've carved an incorporated curve instead of fold into my molds. And I held up uh, Greg, Greg Provaznik's work um, yesterday. I just packed it away. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. I should keep that board out. Um, but uh, I wonder if that's my cheat. And I wonder if that's something that makes mirror molding work better. I don't know. It's a hypothesis. But I want to thank all, the, all the, the friends in here who've come to me and said, Hey, look, man, if you don't have offsets in your molds, you're going to have problems. Um, I just troubleshot some molds last month that had, um, just through a photo survey, their offsets were gapped at the edges. And I saw that and I said, hey, are those CNC molds that are offset? And the answer was, yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, you can see they're not like connecting at the edges, right? I mean, a mold should be squishing. And it was a good conversation in which uh, we kind of digested that the offsets were either miscalculated or unnecessary. And um, I actually said like, yo, give me a mold bottom and I'll just, I'll just make you a bunch of mold tops and mold bottoms and you can have like eight molds, you know? Uh, wouldn't you love to drive over here and pick up eight molds worth of, you know, uh, made, you know, proper, I, uh, they'd be nicer than my molds because I'd paint the edges and stuff. And, and it's as easy as just mixing up concrete, pouring them, letting them cure, kiddie pool for two weeks, yada, yada, little mesh inside, little epoxy paint on the outside. And, um, now I'm not offering mold service to people, but I was just saying like, we can, we can do this. We can get this mirror molded out and do away with these offsets on the top. Um, they did something else that was smart. And I love how there's almost always more than one way to skin a cat. They did something else that was really smart. Um, they kept their offsets and they stacked them one deeper and it solved the problem. They also did a couple of tricks with glue that were pretty cool. And, um, so I am like, I'm kind of mystified. It's mysterious. Um, it's mysterious and I like it. I like it that certitude is impossible. There are just too many factors. I guess overthinking it is what's going to happen. And I love overthinking it with all you guys. I'm having a great time. And I also am grateful, um, primarily and ultimately to the almighty for helping me live and make boards. Because I kind of stumbled into whatever success I have here. Um, I was not just kind of inventing like how to do this, I, you know, and like figuring out how. I was also um, under the discouragement of a lot of people that I trusted. There's one guy who stuck with me the whole way and his name is Bud Stratford and he really encouraged me a lot. And um, Bud is a... Uh, is a, a has been a, a historic encouragement to my work over the years so thanks to bud stratford and my friend Britt, who first gave me the idea to turn two harbor freight presses sideways and build a table between them 
which I was certain wouldn't work, but it was the only thing within reach. And now boards out to 50 inches and you know, it's a good life. And I'm happy you guys share it with me. Thanks for hanging in here. And check out, for those of you who, it doesn't matter, even if you're not going to use CNC for your mold making, um, although the CNC resources, ugh, since I started, it's becoming so much more accessible. Friends, while I continue to talk about mirror molding and simple rustic caveman mold making for you, that's a skill you can have in your pocket. But buddies, it looks like CNC is becoming very accessible with more and more shops that are building for you. Go over to Skateboard Geometry, enjoy uh, the fireworks. It looks like fireworks to me. You guys know I'm um, math-holic, uh, math-allergic. Uh, um, I can't even add, but, um, but uh, it is uh, pretty amazing over there. So enjoy your day. Thanks for being with me here for this little workshop minute, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks, Makers Movement.